we are required by international, our own international obligations as well as our, our laws to host refugees, uh, to give them protection and asylum uh, when they need it. And also at the same time, uh, we are required to look after our national interests uh, given the major threats uh, that we face uh, today uh, from within and from without. And um, the big question is how to balance uh, these competing, sometimes contradictory uh, requirements. And I must say that there was a point that was raised in the Department of Refugee Affairs. In most of the countries in the world that I have served as, as uh, working for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, and I think I have served in uh, 14 or 15 countries in Europe, America, Africa, and Asia. Uh, they are usually where there is a very large population of refugees. There is a very strong, effective uh, government department that coordinates the work of refugees. And I think it is important to note that it's not UNHCR which is uh, hosting these people. We are the country that is hosting. We are the sovereign state that is hosting these people. And it is our responsibility to protect them, to look after them, and to meet their humanitarian needs. And a lot of uh, politicians, and in fact a lot of media people, forget the fact that uh, UNHCR is a support agency. It comes in uh, to give us support, it's not the primary actor in hosting refugees in our country. You don't need UNHCR to host refugees. There are countries that uh, do not have UNHCR offices because they don't have big refugee populations that host refugees like us. And also there are many countries around, in, even in our region, that are facing the same threats, similar threat to us in terms of terrorism, in terms of criminal activities, that host large number of refugees. Like Ethiopia is a good example. <coughs> Djibouti is a host. Tanzania is a host. Uganda is a host. All of these countries uh, have been able to manage their refugee problems much better than us. And I think there is a challenge here for us to per perhaps maybe and we would have interrogated uh, our Department of uh, Refugee Affairs if, if they were have representatives here. Because the burden that you are ca carrying as uh, enforcement officers, as police officers, is overwhelming in the sense that you do not have uh, a supporting department that gives you uh, what the rules and the regulations are, that provides you with the civic education that you need. For example, the issue of uh, human rights is now taught in our police academy. It would have been very good if the department had recommended that refugee law should be included uh, at the very beginning. I also like to sort of um, uh, also challenge UNHCR and say that I think in, in terms of civic education, in terms of engaging the key players in Kenya, is also lacking, as I know from other countries. Uh, for example, I was the senior external relation officer for Southern Africa when both Namibia and uh, South Africa became independent. <coughs> and we spent a lot of money and time working with them on their refugee policies, working them uh, on uh, informing parliamentarians, uh, police officers, prison officers, government officials who are on the front line of uh, refugee affairs. The need to be able to know what the laws of their own country are and what their international obligations are. So I think maybe this is a good beginning and maybe it can be uh, extended. Uh, on a political note, I think the encampment issue uh, might be a bit controversial. I know the judge has made a very good decision uh, which is on the side of our constitution. <coughs> but on the reality is that we have always followed the, uh, the Africa Refugee Convention. And the Africa Refugee Convention uh, allows prima facie, uh, fascia, uh, and all Somalis who enter our country are given, I believe, unless things have changed. Uh, blanket cover. You know, they come in as group, <coughs> they don't come as individuals. So this actually means that because we do not have the means and the resources to be able to deal with such a huge uh, refugee population, uh, the, the gentleman's agreement is to have them in camps. And, and I think that is a, a, a practical approach rather than a legalistic one. And uh, it will probably be uh, uh, there uh, until, of course, maybe the number of refugees in the, in the country decreases and we may be able to have uh, manageable numbers. Uh, but um, at the moment, I think uh, the consensus politically would be to keep refugees in camps as much as possible and to allow maybe 
uh, a limited uh, a limited number of them. In fact, they have been out. Although there is a law that they should be in refugee camps, you you would understand that in fact the Kenya government has accepted for many years for these some of them to be outside the camps, uh, particularly the uh, urbanized, educated. Uh, the Kenya government has known for many years that they are in Isli, they are in Kisumu, they are in Kakamega, but uh, uh, they did not enforce the encampment uh, policy until uh, that unfortunate directive from the Ministry of uh, Internal Security, which was uh, challenged and stopped by court action, and which uh, rightfully the government did not defend, because I think uh, that is uh, uh, a message that perhaps it does not disagree with the decision of the court because it is in line with our constitution. So I, I think uh, to that extent, um, the police have a challenge, uh, UNHCR has a challenge, and I think the Department of uh, Refugee Affairs has a lot of challenge, and I know that they now have a new commissioner uh, who is very uh, involved and engaged, I must say, than the previous commissioner, and I think uh, we need to engage him perhaps to do more to get involved, to get more resources from the state, and uh, maybe even from UNHCR, to be able to do his job uh, much more effective than his predecessors. On one point that I think um, I, I wanted to say on the police is that um, <coughs> this issue of documentation has been mentioned. I think the Department of uh, Refugee Affairs can also rationalize uh, documentation. And also, they in this age of terrorism, it is just not acceptable for someone to be just carrying a piece of paper with his name and UNHCR stuff. I think you need to sort of introduce uh, uh, a more uh, a more acceptable, uh, more um, effective documentation because the person then there could be a machine or a, a database that can immediately identify whether that person is a bona fide refugee or not. Um, and um, I think there's going to be a lot of problems as long as they're different. There's an alien card, there's uh, uh, an RSD card, all kinds of uh, pages. So maybe they need to be standardized for the future. Um, but uh, on the police, I think that I never understand <coughs> why the police would be spending a lot of money and time detaining um, undocumented <coughs> people who, I, I know there's no country in the world that would accept undocumented people to freely walk uh, in everywhere in the country. That is not acceptable. But to detain someone, take him to court, and then the court decides that that person should be fined, detained, uh, and then finally perhaps uh, be handed over to you and it's here. The, what I, uh, I wonder is why does it take that long process? Because it costs us money and time. Time you could have spent dealing with the real criminals and uh, terrorists. Then some petty um, you know, issues. And why are, this not, uh, why are these people not uh, charged with, uh, with other things? Because most of the time when I read in Kitui or Mwingi, most of the time, <coughs> it is illegal entry. Uh, and, and it puzzles me why they're detained on illegal entry when in fact uh, we give them prima facie coverage. 